Do you have a destination in mind? It's along here somewhere. Okay. Probably before this comes back. I think we should stay close to it. Okay. Tell me about the site. It's beautiful. There's a tiny, tiny trillium back there. And people were really, the rangers were really concerned about this tree. It's just like, just a tree. I had, from the way she talked, I thought it was going to be like looming over you no matter where you went. But it's not. Uh, and we're going to put our tent right here. And it's going to look right out the door, right out over the lake. And it's going to be nice. <laughs> I have okay. to go look at the trailer now. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's exquisite. <laughs> this is painted trillium. I don't know another campground where you would find it just hanging out at the edge of your campsite. It's crazy. Really crazy. This is fun. So beautiful. Yeah, bugs. I have so many pictures of her doing exactly this. <laughs> Ooh. 
bigger than the last set, was it? <laughs> Look at the fishy! Hello, fishy! Set it off while I figure out if we're eating. This is pretty incredible. Put your hand by it. Moose. <laughs> so big. Good job. We had a beaver dam blowout, so the water is significantly lower. What is here? They're sundews. So it's a carnivorous plant. See how tiny they are? They've got little sticky hairs on them. And the bugs crawl on the stickiness and crawl out. And so they decompose and it provides nutrients to the plant. You can't get nutrients other ways because we're in a bog and the soil is so poor and nutrient lacking. And up here are cranberries left over from last season. There's a bunch of them. And they're still quite tasty, although very, very squishy. You can try one. Will you give me one? This looks like a nice one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Am I telling you about the azalea? Yeah. Yeah, this is azalea. It's a shrub. And though it is a purple shrub, I still don't like it. I don't like shrubs, mostly. It's not true. But sometimes it's true. But it's pretty exquisite, isn't it? Yes, that's very nice. <laughs> Hello, frog. This is cucumber root, uh, best named because its roots are edible and tastes like cucumber. Got the whorl of uh, leaves here and then a second whorl up where the flowers. These might actually be bracts, not leaves.
this is Tainted Helium. The, like on many flowers, the pink parts uh, are basically runner guidelines to guide the bug in. This one's head is standing straight up, which is uh, kind of unusual. They usually nod more. But very nice for photography. This is a lady slipper orchid. It's a native New England orchid. They're, the pink ones, there are several different lady slippers. It's a genus. And this one is the pink lady slipper, which is, which is actually quite common in New England. There's really tons of them if you keep your eyes out. They have these uh, cute, kind of fuzzy, lightly fuzzy leaves. Um, all orchids have leaves with the veins running sort of the long way, meaning at the point. Uh, some other types of plants have that too, but those lilies and grasses are the most common to have that veining. So if you find one, you found something interesting. Beautiful eyes. Is the other one? Oh, it's further away. Oh, there it is. It's going that way. Oh, oh there's two of them. I believe these are newts. So these are purple pitcher plants. Uh, they're carnivorous plants. You can see like tubes and the bugs crawl down into them. And then if you see the sort of shininess here, the hairs, the hairs all point inward and so the bugs try to crawl back out and they can't. And so they die and break down and are nutrients for the plant. And this is the bud of one of its flowers which are held up high on a stick so that they can be pollinated by bugs. The bugs can come to the flower and then transfer the pollen to the next flower without uh, being tempted down into the pitchers uh, where they will die and not pollinate anything at all. Carnivorous plants are the best.
this one is another Trillium. Uh, it's called Purple Trillium or Stinking Benjamin. Uh, it smells really bad. This one's a little bit faded, so it's not as vibrant, sort of burgundy as it usually is. Um, but it mimics the smell and the appearance of uh, rotting meat in order to attract its pollinators, which are flies. It's not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so here are some more uh, of the purple trillium paint, uh, stinking benjamin uh, trillium as in three tri three petals and three bracts and three leaves these are one of my favorites Good job. Oh, look how beautiful that was. You did an excellent job. This great campsite we've got. We will now be read to. This is Anathem by Neil Stevenson. Extra Muris. One. In Old Orc, literally outside the walls. So we're here in the middle of the pond. At the amazing floating bog, there's actually several of them just hanging out in the middle of these ponds. And these are uh, purple pitcher plants, carnivorous plants, hanging out. There's like no nutrients hardly in the bog ground. So the pitcher plants capture the bugs. Look at them. There's also cranberry in here. Sunbeam. This is so great. She's paddling around. <laughs> you can't stop catching fish. <laughs> that was a little bad. She's paddling around looking at bog flowers and I'm fishing and getting lots of bites and a couple of little fish. I like it here. I love the green, yellow, orange, red gradient of the sphagnum moss in this bog. Look, there's a sunbeam. <laughs> Oh, it's tiny. Yep. Oh, there it is. I got it. These are very thin, very dry. Fine twigs that were not on the ground. It's all mashed up. <laughs> what? It's perfect.
Okay, I guess pine cones are pretty good for this. So you're better at this thing. <laughs> a brute force approach is not necessarily the most successful. <laughs> Although you seem to be cheating by. Goodbye, steak. What do you think? I guess 2.30 in the morning last night, I decided to look out the back of the tent to see how the tarp was doing over all our gear over the picnic table. I realized that it was flapping around uselessly. And put on my rain suit, took off my socks, went out to go fix it. And that was around when we started having to hold the tent up because the wind was blowing so hard. So she got out to help me. And removed the tent. Went real great. With all the stuff still in it. Most of the stuff still in it. Yeah. A bunch of our stuff got wet, but nothing important. wood got pretty wet. This wood was out in the rain. The reason I was barefoot was because my boots were one of the things out under that tarp. They're probably still wet. Didn't want to get my other shoes wet. <laughs> Happy with how well we work together. Now we're roasting sausages over a fire. It's a six person tent, so it wasn't a little tent to move <laughs> <laughs> in the mad wind. Yeah, so it's 10 by 
ten foot ten. I have always staked down my tents, and I can't remember the last time I was even glad I bothered to do that. This is the first time I've ever seen a tent get at all folded over in the wind. And in hindsight, we put the tent in a dumb place. We knew there was a storm likely to be coming, and we were right on the shore of a big lake. It turned out we're aiming directly at the wind. Next time we'll start off pitching a tent further from shore. Just couldn't resist the view though. Before we <laughs> moved it, the view was straight out onto the lake at our front door. Yeah. Still thoroughly enjoyed the entire experience. It was great fun. And then the wind kept up basically all day finally down low enough for it to be reasonable, reasonably comfortable to sit out here, reasonable to have a fire. I chopped up one of the logs into a, a bunch of tiny little sticks to get to this dry wood inside, but I don't think she even needed them to start this fire. <laughs> The nice thing about the wind all day is that it dried out a lot of stuff. It made a lot of pine cones and brush. Thin pine twigs. Over my part of what you used? 